Prepping channels drop videos every day about the threats in the world, but the greatest danger, the one someday people will call the big one, is sliding in right under the radar, and no one sees it coming. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now waiting, better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. You know, it's one of the things that I think is really uh, chill about living in the Western world, here in the United States in particular, is that uh, you can have pretty much any opinion you want on pretty much anything, and it really doesn't matter. I mean, we even have a saying for it. It's like everyone is entitled to their opinion, and people certainly take advantage of that. I know, uh, you know, here on this platform, uh, you know, all through the summer, there were so many people that were of the opinion that, uh, you know, with the uh, COVID, the, the lockdowns and the vaccine mandates and all that that, you know, people were talking about in the past, uh, there were people absolutely dead set, adamant that all that stuff was going to come back in the fall. It was my opinion that I didn't really see any evidence to suggest that that was going to be the case. I said as much to a lot of people. People got pretty pissed at me for that. I mean, at least, you know, some people did. Uh, and, uh, you know, in parted ways, they had their opinion and I had mine. Mine happened to be right. Theirs happened to be wrong. But there was no consequence for them to hold that incorrect opinion. And I'm not saying that I wish that there were, but uh, you know, there was no downside to it. You know, you can just kind of believe anything you want and uh, you know, that's your right, that's your freedom. And there's, there's no penalty for being wrong most of the time. And that's the way that it's been. And that's been nice, but uh, it's a bit out of touch with reality, isn't it? I mean, the idea of uh, natural selection, the, the strong survive, the weak perish, you know, that kind of idea. And it's kind of nice that, uh, you know, you can have, uh, you can make mistakes and you don't have to pay for them dearly. Uh, but I think that that has gotten a lot of people confused. Uh, and the confusion is that I think a lot of people believe that because in the past there was no real consequence to them having, uh, you know, incorrect opinions that aren't really based on anything, uh, they think that there'll never be consequences for that type of thing. And uh, I don't know that that's necessarily going to continue to be true. And that's what I want to talk a little bit about in this video. It's January here, just another January in New England. It's almost 60 degrees out. It's raining. Haven't seen any snow this year. I don't know if you've ever lived in New England or if you're familiar with New England, but uh, this is the place that uh, almost killed all the pilgrims because the, you know, the winters can be so rough here. And, uh, you know, here we are raining in January and uh, haven't seen any snow. Not just weather. I mean, that's just uh, the last uh, couple months have been a little bit weird, but it's not just the last couple of months. We've had a lot of weather anomalies here lately. And, uh, you know, what's the big deal about that? Uh, at the moment, this is kind of nice. I haven't had to plow the driveway. That's been kind of uh, convenient, not having to do any of that. It's nice to be outside and not freezing my ass off. Uh, I'm, well, look at what I'm wearing on my legs right now. <laughs> I'm wearing shorts out here. It's kind of nice, but every situation has both ups and downs. And one of the downsides of having this kind of crazy weather, where it's up, it's down, it's wet, it's dry, it's hot, it's cold, uh, makes it difficult to plant crops, doesn't it? It makes it unpredictable. And I know a lot of people here on YouTube, uh, you know, that watch videos like this, you know, don't necessarily live out in the country, don't necessarily plant their own garden. I'm not saying everybody, but I think, uh, you know, a lot of people that watch this channel are more like in theory kind of people. Uh, you know, planting, planting the garden, plant, uh, growing your own food, it's not easy. It's a challenge. I, now, I'm not the best gardener in the world, but uh, there are a lot of uh, farmers who are good at what they do, and they're having a lot of trouble too. I know just for us, when we first uh, got here to our new homestead site, one of the first things that I did was I planted a bunch of fruit trees. And the first couple of years, we had some pretty good harvests off of those because the weather was you know, more, more typical for, for those uh, time periods. But recently, we've been having some pretty unusual weather. You know. This year, it's, uh, it's very warm in the winter, 
last year. Uh, it was cold, but we had some really, really huge warm snaps. I know that in the middle of January, it got really warm last year. The trees started budding. Uh, and not surprisingly, it got cold again. And all those buds died. And then later on, uh, you know, that same year in the spring, we didn't see the sun for months. That's unusual here in New England uh, during the spring. You know, spring tends to be kind of uh, moist. You know, they say uh, April showers bring May flowers, but you do occasionally see the sun, but we didn't. And fungus started growing on all the trees, killing more of the buds. The number of actual buds, flowers, that we had on our trees last year was one. Oh, only one flower bud made it. And that one ended up rotting with fungus on it. So we didn't get any fruit all last year. Farming's difficult. Growing things, growing your own food is difficult. I know a lot of people don't do it, but it's hard. You know, I don't have an enormous amount of experience with it, but even farmers are having a lot of uh, challenge in uh, you know, pulling things together. If you have a field where you normally grow corn and then it floods out, you know, maybe you, you wish to yourself, oh, geez, I should have uh, grown rice in that field, turned it into a rice paddy. The unpredictability of weather makes it really difficult to grow food, to have a successful agriculture in any country. And I mentioned earlier that I felt that a lot of people forget the idea that if you have erroneous ideas about things, so there's no consequence to it. And, you know, up until now, a lot of us have been protected from that. You know, you can just kind of believe whatever you want. If uh, you don't like the idea that the climate might be changing, you just don't believe it. You know, there's plenty of uh, opinions out there, uh, you know, here on YouTube. You can find some scientists that'll say that there's no change happening, you know, while the uh, consensus and <laughs> the data suggests that there is an overall warming trend. You know, there's even scientists out there, in quotes, uh, that'll say things are actually cooling off. So you can find someone to corroborate whatever opinion you want. And uh, in a world where it doesn't matter what your opinion is and you're gonna be protected and safe anyway, I suppose it doesn't really much matter. You know, you can believe in you know, Santa Claus or whatever, and uh, you know, nobody, no one's gonna die <laughs> uh, if they believe in Santa Claus. But if your survival plan depends on Santa Claus bringing you food, it's probably not gonna go very well. If your survival plan depends on agriculture continuing to function as it normally has during a period of climate stability, and you are imagining that that is going to continue into a period of climate instability because you imagine that the instability isn't there, it's probably not gonna go very well either. Now I know there's probably a lot of people, maybe you right now are already writing a comment down in the, the comment section below saying that it's crazy uh, that I'm advocating that the, you know, the government should come in and you know, do whatever crazy plans the government's planning on doing to, you know, to counter some of this stuff. And to that I would say, well, when did I even bring that up? I haven't mentioned solutions or any of that stuff in this entire video because this video isn't about solutions. This video is about the situation. I think that a lot of people have heard uh, about some of the solutions that are being proposed and they sound awful. And to be honest, I think they would work terribly. I think that the government solutions to this problem, at least the ones that I'm hearing, would, would if anything, probably make things worse because that's oftentimes what government does. It comes in to try to help and it just makes things worse. But just because you don't like somebody's solutions to a problem doesn't mean that the problem doesn't exist in the first place. Just because there are no appealing solutions out there doesn't mean that the problem for which the solutions are being suggested doesn't exist. It might be appealing to th think that the problem isn't even there because if there is no problem, then there's no responsibility or impetus to adopt any of these solutions. And I'm not suggesting that anybody does adopt any particular solutions that are being proposed at the moment. But I am suggesting that you should get ready for the consequences. Because whether you have the opinion that the climate is changing or not, whether you're of the, of the opinion that that's gonna have an impact on agriculture and the ability, you know, for us as a species to create food, or if you're not of that opinion, this is not one of those situations where you're not gonna have to pay for your opinion. If you don't prepare for something that's coming, then you're by default 
relying on somebody else to prepare for it for you, or you're just gonna suffer the consequences. Up until now, we haven't had to suffer the consequences. Here in the Western world, we've always been able to be protected. You can think whatever you want, you can believe whatever you want, and at the end of the day, there'll be someone there to catch you. But as things get thinner, as resources get scarcer, as margins get more narrow, that's not always gonna be the case. And I think that we are moving into a time when if you hold an opinion, it doesn't turn out to be true, it's not just gonna be some nothing. You know, you have a difference of opinion with some jerk on YouTube. You, you say there's gonna be crazy COVID lockdowns in the fall of 2023. Some jerk says he doesn't think he sees any evidence for that. You go your separate ways. There's no consequence for any of those people that believed all that kind of baseless. I'm not gonna call it crazy because you know, things like that can happen, but baseless. There's not, there, there were no consequences for people that believe that kind of stuff. But when it comes to food and your access to it, if you're depending on the systems that depend on the stability of our climate and the climate is not stable, you're depending on something that you can't count on. And I think you can guess how well that's gonna go. What's worked in the past isn't gonna work in the future if the situation on the ground changes. When the situation on the ground changes, your approach to it needs to change as well. Otherwise, you're waiting for Santa Claus to deliver your food. That's it, and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another one that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at Patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.